I'm Joe Morgenstern, and it's that time of year when people make lists. Best this, best that. I've made my 10 best list for the movies of the year, and the best of the best is really an easy pick this year. It's Boyhood, Richard Linklater's Boyhood. Nothing like it has ever been made. It's a movie that was shot over a period of 12 years, covering 12 years in a family's life. When you think of the commitment that was involved in this, and incidentally, one of the things I love about the movie is that nobody asked for a contract. Not the cast, not Linklater, nobody, nobody. Could have been a disaster, could have been mediocre. In fact, it turned out brilliantly. And there's simply nothing like it. Birdman has a drum track for a music track, and that really sets the pace for a remarkably energetic movie, Michael Keaton think? giving a great performance as a washed up Hollywood icon, terrific supporting cast led by Ed Norton and Emma Stone, and Emmanuel Lebesky, the cinematographer, giving the impression that it was all done in one take. Laura Poitras' Citizen Four is about Edward Snowden, the NSA whistleblower, whom you may consider a traitor or a patriot, whatever you think of him, you'll be surprised by who he is, and you'll be fascinated by watching him sitting on a bed in his Hong Kong hotel room, watching television and seeing the world change in real time as a result of what he did. Bennett Miller's Foxcatcher is taken from real life. It's a murder mystery involving Steve Carell's uh, very rich guy, a DuPont, who in the 1990s wanted to pull together a world-class Olympic wrestling team. But it's about performances and a very strange tone. Carell is wonderful, but so are two terrific actors who play wrestler brothers, Mark Ruffalo and surprisingly and movingly and eloquently Channing Tatum. Wes Anderson's Grand Budapest Hotel is like a beautiful toy. It's wonderful to watch. The production design is so entrancing. It's, it's also like eating a dessert, except a, a rich dessert that deals in the context of 1930s Europe with enough of the darkness of the impending war to make the movie smart as well as beautiful. However you want to pronounce it, Ida or Ida, I want to pronounce it Ida, it's a perfect film. It's a Polish film set in the 1960s about a young nun looking for a place in the world. It's shot in black and white. It's one of the most beautiful films I've ever seen, visually. And it certainly belongs, I think, on anybody's top 10 list of the year. Leviathan has a visual majesty like almost no other movie released this year. It's set in contemporary Russia in a small town on the Bering Sea. But the movie also has a dramatic majesty. It's about a very abstract subject that it makes intensely dramatic all-encompassing corruption in contemporary Russia. When we talk about the movie Locke, L-O-C-K-E, a man's name, Ivan Locke, we're talking about a guy in a car. A guy in a car for the whole 82 minutes, I think it is, driving on a British motorway at a crisis point in his life. But we are also talking about one of the great performances ever put on film. And I'm, I mean it. I mean, right up there with Laurence Olivier and The Entertainer and Othello. And the performer is Tom Hardy. Chris Rock's top five is a latecomer to my list, but it's also a latecomer to the movie season. And yet, how could I not put it on the list? He's smart, he's funny. Yes, he's raunchy and profane, but he goes through a movie that he wrote and directed and stars in with such a plum and his humor is grounded by Rosario Dawson's wisdom and romance. It's hard to describe under the skin and that's what makes it good. It's deeply unsettling, it's strange, eerie, and it has a starring performance by Scarlett Johansson. All I'll tell you now is that 
in the movie. She is not what she seems to be, but boy, is she a terrific actress.